Last we spoke on the Mexican cruise, you said, you know, if I continue knee-jerk responding, then I'd continue to have the same outcome. So I returned from the, the cruise with my fiancé, turned on the printer one afternoon, and it was already in queue. This really adorable young lady's profile from Match.com popped out, and I moved out. And I knee-jerk reacted, yes. And this is what's really hard for me. Because I still can't wrap my brain, my feelings around that the way people treat you is more about you than it is about them. So my girlfriends who are, who are psychologists are really angry with you because they think that you are keeping women or anybody. Um, but it's like a battered woman syndrome. Well, you created it, you created it, you created it. It's your fault. And that's why the tears now. They're right to be mad at us because we will not tell you something different than we know. In other words, on the one hand, you could say that by us saying to you that you are the creator of your own reality could be blame pointing or you could say it is empowering. When you're not getting something that you want and you feel mad at yourself because you're not getting something you want, we can see how uncomfortable that would be. But how much more uncomfortable is it to believe that it is someone else's creation and you cannot control what they do? What was it that you were so angry with him about? Well, you know, I did want him to be different. There was drug addiction, there was volatility and abuse and gambling and, and all this stuff in the so beginning. So was, was this person a match to the perfect relationship that through time you have launched into your vibrational escrow? I focused on the good in the beginning and and then I And what happened when you were focused upon the good? It felt great. And beyond how it felt, what happened to the relationship? Well, in other words, here's what we're getting at. Sometimes people will say to us, "Abraham, I want a partner and I want a partner now." And we say, is that stay with us we're really going to get to where you want to go we can feel you tuning away because you think we're dragging you away from where you want to go yeah, I'm but we're just preparing the basis to drag you to where you don't want to go <laughs> <laughs> I'm focused some people will say but Abraham I want my partner and I want my partner now and we say well if the now factor is the most important thing to you and you really emphasize that in your vibration the universe is going to match you up quickly but it will match you up quickly with what's active in your vibration right now so if you've had past hurts or past things that you don't like that are still active in your vibration and you insist that the relationship come now 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 when it gets there while you might be thrilled that it came now as you begin to sort through it it may not be exactly what you are looking for so then we say as you approach or evaluate some partner they are multifaceted many components you could become so pure in your vibration of expecting to get from this person what you've been telling the universe all along that you want that if the universe has delivered this person to you and if your vibration is really in alignment with what you want this person must be a vibrational match to what you want now people say well, where does free will come in? What if that person doesn't want to be like that? We say, then the universe would not have brought you together. But what happens is most of you have got your vibration going all over the place. So it's sort of like a grab bag of potential experiences that you can have with most people. And so there are things that you love about relationships and things that you hate about relationships. But we would not have moved out for this reason. We, we want to say to you in this powerful, powerful way that if there was so much there that you were feeling satisfied with and if you could have trained your own vibration into alignment with the parts of that relationship that you like the most you could have this wonderful relationship with those parts of this person but where it gets screwy is it's it's sort of like coming to boulder 
and having a wonderful meal at the restaurant next door and having a good time at a seminar or wherever and then being angry with the city of Boulder that every aspect of it could not meet your expectations and we say well the city of Boulder is a diverse place and so why not just find the parts of it that you do resonate with and live in those parts but relative to a city you never say no the rest of the city needs to clean up its act so that it all pleases me we know where you're going with this and we know where your psychologist friends are going with it and we know where most of the female population and a small part of the male population on the planet is going with this <laughs> and that is I should own this person he should not have thoughts that are other than me he should not have interests that are outside of me he should make a commitment only to me it is illogical to expect any other human to come wholly to you and if you could just be thrilled with the parts that are coming to you larger and larger parts would come to you but it's defying the laws of the universe to want to completely own anyone I so don't feel that I wanted to own him and it then why did it upset you when a piece of paper came out of a printer that showed it was a culmination of as I mentioned drug addiction and abuse and gambling and I wanted to look anywhere else I wanted so, so where are you at here with this I'm heartbroken and and, and I know that I failed but, but myself but I failed heartbroken and failed him heartbroken because I guess it's the idea of heartbroken because I fell in love with parts of a person who had other parts I couldn't fall in love with you hear that he needed to be different for me to fall in love with all of the parts of him well how disempowering is that it's just baffling I'm trying to get clarity here in that you say on one hand how someone treats you is about you so much more than it's about them so maybe he wasn't violent with anyone else that was my fault and yet our wedding vows are to be we'll see how it goes good feels good bad feels bad um, we'll just see how it goes but then if we focus on one thing out of 6,000 that is good uh, 6,000 things that 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 aren't good um, then all the other are things you are, drop away. So are you telling us that you met someone who had one good quality and 6,000 bad qualities okay, and you dramatic. you developed a relationship with this person I tried to focus on the good but that went away when we got him sober quite frankly this chemistry and earth-shattering sex and yada 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 there was more than that it was an adventure it was thrilling it was all these things and so why are you heartbroken because I feel I've let myself down but why are you heartbroken when you use the word heartbroken it's particularly pointed what's it pointed at because what? I want this love that I dream and I so couldn't give it to him unconditionally I couldn't love him but, through but hear it. what you're saying and this is really wonderful what you're saying is over time I've created what I consider to be the perfect relationship and it's out there being held for me in vibrational escrow and I so wanted this person to be that and he wasn't so we want to say to you in very logical terms so he's only one of a few million who aren't it but that doesn't mean that it cannot still come to be so why the self-torture about him not matching your dream because we create it all and I was very arrogant before I met him I thought I am with Abraham I understand this and that and the other I'm, I've got it going on and yet I call this in hello well it's, Where just, do part I go of the, from it's here? just part of that post manifestational awareness that we're talking about in other words sometimes you have to have an experience to clarify do you think that through the experience that what's being held for you in vibrational escrow is even sharper and clearer than it was before did you do any amending during this experience so don't you think that now your future reality has even more potential to please you than it did before because of this experience in other words, this is what we were talking about earlier and you are the quintessential 
example of the reason that we say it we want so much for you to make peace with where you are and instead of making peace with where you are you're beating up on who you are you're saying I did something wrong I should have known better and we say how do you figure anything out if it is not through the exposure to the experience and so all that happened in this episode of your life is that you wanted your dream relationship so much that you made a decision based on action without really taking the emotional journey in a full way and there's no problem with doing that because all that happened as it unfolded was that it showed to you that this wasn't a perfect match that would be like Jerry and Esther from Phoenix on their way to San Diego and taking a wrong turn and heading off into the desert and then being so mad at themselves that they headed off into the desert that they don't feel worthy of correcting their course and ever getting back to San Diego just spinning around out in the desert endlessly and saying we're so bad we should have known better how did we do this stupid thing and we would say instead of beating up on yourself and running around in circles till you run out of gas or water why not get hold of the map why not figure out what it is that you want why not get headed back in the direction of what you want and that's where the making peace with yourself comes in what you want to begin saying is hey I did the best that I knew how to do then and I was so eager and he did sort of trick me he did pretend to be the person that I really wanted him to be and I let my head lead me rather Rather than my gut lead me I let what I wanted be stronger than what I knew I felt reservations I felt plenty of reservations but I so wanted this to be the one that I disregarded my reservations and I went along with it only to discover that when you disregard reservations and there's really a reason for the reservation the reason for the reservation gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because when there is vibrational variance between who I am and what I say I want and what I am allowing myself to have or be or do in this moment my guidance system is always telling me that so we can understand how you might be saying to us I'm a little upset that I didn't follow my guidance better and we say how do you think anybody figures out how to follow their guidance you watch a baby walk and fall down you don't say get up you little dummy <laughs> you appreciate the effort and you know that he'll gain his balance and in time he'll be running and having a good time and so when you don't go exactly the way you want to go you gotta stop saying you stupid little dummy you've got to start saying hey that was interesting hmm now I understand more clearly what those feelings were about and once it manifested I can see the vibrational matches and I just wanted so much to be a deliberate creator and I wanted so much to get it right and I wanted so much to get this one thing right that I've wanted for so long and we say you never get it done and you cannot get it wrong so you had some experiences that were uncomfortable we understand that and we do not wish uncomfortable experiences on you but what we do know is that you've got to give yourself a break and say hey I attracted that to me because it was active in my vibration in some way and now I got the full dose of what was active in my vibration I think I'm gonna do a little cleaning up of my vibration before I let the next one in